Biden's comment about uh, domestic jobs does not stimulate economic growth or enhance competitiveness of American worldwide companies. What about that? Well, I'll give you an example. During the Bush years, the large multinational corporations in this country threw two million American workers off of their payrolls. Simultaneously, they hired two million workers in foreign countries. We have lost during the Bush years alone 30 percent of our manufacturing jobs, going from 17 million down to 12 million. One of the reasons that the working class in this country is being decimated and the middle class is disappearing is that we're not producing manufacturing jobs in this country. We're not making the products that the American people are buying. And clearly, from the Chamber of Commerce's point of view, if they can make five cents more by shutting down a plant in America and moving to China or moving to India, that's what they will do. That's what they have been doing. It is an absolute outrage. And the demand from the American people must be that if these corporations want us to purchase their products, and they certainly do, it's high time that they started manufacturing those products here in the United States and putting our people to work so they can, in fact, buy these products. Senator, will you get any Republican support on this? I certainly hope so, because I think all over this country, whether you're Republican, whether you're Democrat, or whether you're independent, as I am, the American people are sick and tired about the fact they can't buy products manufactured in the United States of America. They are sick and tired of buying products made in China, 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 Mexico, other countries. They would like to see products produced in this country. And you're quite right. This is an issue of economic patriotism. And I think the Chamber of Commerce and the multinationals are selling the American working people down the drain and look at going all over the world for cheap labor. And I think we've got to stop that. Senator, are these incentives, in your opinion, do they go far enough? Only no. two years. No, they don't go anywhere near far enough. What we're talking about now is just tax policy, and modestly at that. What we have got to do is move boldly into trade policy. I voted when I was in the House against NAFTA, against free trade with China. I think it's time to revisit those policies. Trade, Ed, is a good thing when it benefits both sides. Yeah. Trade is a bad thing when American workers are being forced to compete against people who make 30 or 40 cents an hour. We've got to rethink those policies. What do you say to the critics that uh, the Democrats are doing this because it's election year politics just weeks out from the midterm? Democrats should have done this two years ago. They should have done it four years ago. Yeah. They should do it today. They should do it tomorrow. This is a hugely important issue. The real question is, why is it so hard for us to get a couple of Republicans to stand up for the big money interest in corporate America on this issue? What you make of John Boehner's comment about Americans aren't ready for solutions? <laughs> I think Americans are crying out for solutions. Yeah. They understand that we cannot go back to the people who caused this economic crisis in the first place. Senator, good to have you with us tonight. Congratulations on being a part of this. This is really the key. This is why we are losing jobs in this country because of the outsourcing. This is why we have high unemployment. It's this culture of a race to the bottom line and the economic patriotism for only a few. Uh, I mean, it, it, it really is. This is where we are. And I don't know how you're going to replenish these jobs. And it's good to see the Democrats who care about people do something about it. Good to have you with us. Up next, Christine O'Donnell is evolving into an all-star psychotalker. First team, I'd say. She was